On the Isles of Scilly, Glyn, the island bus driver, familiar to generations of holidaymakers, is secretly planning to revive an ambition he had to give up over 40 years ago. Did you kind of dream of making it big? I suppose in those days, yes. Yeah, I mean, everybody wanted to make it big. I'd love to be able to pull it off, but I don't know if we're going to be able to. Top Island chef Phil and his Bulgarian wife Mimi are finally hoping to have their daughter Annie christened. It's very important to us, especially to Mimi. I've tried to arrange it that many times because we've been together for five years and it never happened. But how will their respective parents, who've never met and don't even speak the same language, get on? <laughs> and the minister, the Reverend David Easton, has a mission to complete before he sets sail from the islands in a few weeks' time. He wants to leave his mark on Scilly for historians of the future. I suppose in leaving this, uh, I'm, I'm leaving something for those who follow on afterwards as well. First light on the Isles of Scilly, off the western tip of Cornwall. And as dawn emerges, there are already early signs of life amongst the islanders. It's the height of the summer season, and every hour of daylight must be put to good use. Before they know it, autumn will be here, and the holidaymakers will be gone. Down at the world's smallest radio station, Radio Silly, the island's Methodist minister, David Easton, is up early too. David's joined presenter Steve Watt for his final Thought for the Day broadcasts before the minister leaves for his new job in Wales. Hiya, Steve, all right? David, good to see you again. I hear you've been uh, doing the request. David wants to pass on the profound sense of wonder, he says his time on these remote islands way out in the Atlantic Ocean has left him with. Good morning. The sea is both a blessing and a curse. A curse when lives are lost at sea. But it's a blessing too. Without the sea, many of us would be without a job. Without the sea, there wouldn't be the simple pleasure of walking on a beach or gazing down into crystal clear water from one of the keys. Without the sea, there wouldn't be life on Earth. When I move to Aberystwyth in a few weeks' time, I shall be separated from Scilly by a stretch of sea. But it will also be something that links us. David hopes to leave his mark after seven years on what he regards as one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And he's been working on a plan for a slightly more permanent legacy. Unbeknown to David, Jackie and a group of the island ladies have got together to plan a big farewell party for their minister. David's a popular figure amongst churchgoers and non-churchgoers alike, and they want everyone to be involved. What about the surprise for David in the evening? Okay, so what so... have you got up your sleeve? Well, I thought it might be nice to have a Chinese meal. Ooh, right. A good idea. Lovely. I'd love it. Yeah. You like it? Yeah, I, I like Chinese. it. Yeah, I love Chinese. I like anything. Too. But um, we've got to get it flown over yeah. um, from Penzance. Although there are a range of restaurants serving good plain meals to be found across the islands, there's no foreign or exotic food of any kind. A Chinese meal would have to be brought in on one of the regular helicopter flights requiring perfect timing and considerable expense. 
Yeah. When did you last have a Chinese meal on the Isle of Scilly? Oh, five years ago. It was the last time you the had last a Chinese meal? The last time I had a meal. Chinese meal on Scilly. I don't think I've ever. Oh, I did, yes. I remember Steve used to go across and get them when he had the plane, but that was years ago. It must yeah. be 15, so, yeah. 20 years ago, I think. And since when I had it, about 20 people combined because it, it was such right. a big event. So it's special to me as well. Oh, I'll yes. find out then if he likes it or not. I know he likes his food. Yes. But whether um, or not the food would be Chinese, I don't well, know. He's, he's coming up to see me later on in the week. We could, I could try and establish if he even likes it, because it could be a disaster if he doesn't like Chinese. Exactly. Well, I can't order it it's, today, then. I'll have no. to... <laughs> if, if, he really, if he really loves Chinese, that would be so good an idea. Yeah. So we'll have well, to find out his real... Uh, we'll have to find out what he likes. OK, I'll... I'll do my you best. Can, do your best. Do my best. Okay. I'm sure best. you can steer the conversation, Pam. Oblivious to all the plotting going on, the minister is up at one of St Mary's biggest hotels, meeting up with the chef, Phil, and his Bulgarian wife, Mimi. David's talking them through the details of the baptism service for their 14-month-old daughter. Uh, and so then I take her and then I'll carry her around the church. I usually sing a song with a child around the church to introduce her to the oh. congregation. So okay. I hope she's OK on that. Oh, she will join in for me. Yeah, well, children of um, Annie's age are, are quite an awkward age to be baptised. They're sort of not... They're yes. too old to just be hold out, held like babies, and they're not old enough to explain what happens sometimes. But yeah. uh, Unlike many priests, David believes strongly that a christening should be a public event involving the whole community. This service is taking part in a, a service on a Sunday, and that's quite important, really, because it's part of the life of the church. It's not something you just do on your own in a, in a private house or somewhere else. It is in, a, in the church building yeah. and in, with the congregation. So the congregation make a promise as well, which is really important. That, and I think perhaps their promise is as important as yours, really. Children matter, don't they? Not, I think, in a deeper philosophical, if you like to say, sense. Children are not just the possession, if that's the right word, of their parents. They belong to all of us. We all have a responsibility for our children. And they're part of the community. They are the future generations, aren't they? So children are a gift to everyone. Their daughter Annie's quite a boisterous little character and could be quite a handful in church. But what's really worrying Phil and Mimi is how their parents will get on. Phil's mum and dad are coming over from the Midlands and Mimi's from Bulgaria. They've never met before and don't speak a word of each other's language. It's turned out to be a very busy summer for Silly's iconic double-decker holiday bus. It's owned by Glyn the busman, and his tours around the main island of St Mary's are enduringly popular. That's where I used to go to school. Still got the end of school photographs still on the top of those steps up there. 15 years of age. Proud and punchy with half a ton of brill cream on the air. But unknown to the holiday makers, Glynn spent much of the summer trying to achieve his dream. 40 years after his original island rock and roll band folded, Glynn's trying again. He's got together with a group of mates and is trying to launch a new band called, perhaps appropriately, delusions. They've had a couple of rehearsals, but now there's been a breakthrough. All across the islands, posters have been going up advertising a music gig at the island's biggest music venue. Is it true you've got your first gig? Well, it's definitely going ahead. Definitely going ahead now, so uh, we've got to get all the practice in that we can. We've got to settle down and, uh, and work at it. We, we need to get about 15 songs off so that we've got any credibility at all. We've got to do at least an hour. There's no good going up there if we don't do an hour. Yeah, I, I'm, I just want to get on with it now. Yeah. Glyn has four decades of catching up to do. And as such a high-profile figure, he knows he's got a lot to lose. David Easton's been invited to tea at smallholders Pam and Steve Manning's farm. They must extract the vital information about the minister's preference for Chinese food without him having an inkling of what's going on. 
not an easy task. Pam and Steve have decided to take a very softly, softly approach. That's what I envy you, going back to civilization as such. And you'll be able to walk down the road and go to a restaurant of your choice. And a... Oh, well, an avarice, which is quite sort of cultural, really, yeah, isn't it? I mean, really... there's the arts theatre and the, and the university yeah. and the cinema and all. There's all sorts there. It's, it's going to be great, actually. So when, you... when you're living <laughs> here, do you sort of miss things like that? Yeah. Mm. Wow. Well, I do. I, I miss, perhaps, museums. We used to go down to Cardiff, there's a museum there, and I used to love going to drama, you know, I love mm. drama. The yes. funny thing you ever did, though, was we were in London area, Greater London, and we went to a Chinese, and we had fried seaweed, deep fried seaweed, Oh, yes, didn't we? they said it was seaweed. So the trap is set, but will he take the bait? so determined with your brother to get to the de de depth of what sort of seaweed this was, yeah. you see, because perhaps we could do it on island, and then they admitted there, finally, that it's cabbage, actually. It's a dried <laughs> cabbage, it's not even come from the sea. There are seaweeds you can eat, there was a programme on the... Oh, one, this, one of these television programs that goes around the coast. Oh, of the dear. Just as they're getting close, David hijacks the and conversation and takes it in a completely different direction. This looks like being a much tougher assignment than they'd thought. Meanwhile, down by the harbour, and it's a big moment for Phil and Mimi. With little Annie's baptism just around the corner, Mimi's parents are arriving on the old Silonian ferry. They made it. <laughs> they didn't get lost. <sighs> the problem is that neither of Mimi's parents speak a word of English. Good wish of the communication problems will get even more complicated when Phil's parents arrive shortly from Birmingham. Back at the small holding, Pam and Steve are taking a very long time getting David to cough up the information they now desperately need. I, like, I love things from the sea, and I like, I mean, I love the, the prawns that they do here. But you can get king prawns in Chinese food, so you can get king prawns. Sweet and sour king prawns is just going to happen. The problem with you is you don't like you don't like rice, which is a, when you get to things like Chinese food, it does get a bit but, sort of oh, problematic. You into Chinese can... food? I quite like Chinese food, yes. And, uh... I like sweet and sour. I don't know, do you like sweet and sour? I do, actually, well, I can like any of it. I'm a sweet and sour. Now Pam's got the bit between the teeth, there's no stopping her. Crackers, don't they? Do you like rice? I do, yes. Yes, you can... You're just peculiar. Because you can do... So, is chow mein rice? Yeah. What is your really favourite one? Well, I always start... Now, this is really naff and boring and, you know, pathetic, but anyway, I really like bang-bang chicken, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just nice and, you know, it's all sort of very basic stuff, isn't it? I like it. Well, what is it? Well, bang, well, bang, bang, it's, it's on, like lots of menus, these, not lots of meals. It's nestles in a bed of lettuce or something. Yeah. And right. then you have cooked chicken on top, yeah. and then there's this peanut salt based, oh, yeah, I think, sauce eat. that goes yes. over the top. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling quite hungry thinking about this. <laughs> Bingo. Uh, it's in the bag at last. Now it's all systems go for the no, meal of the year. Welsh case, but I'd like to wonder if I could come round and you could... On the other side of the island, at Old Town Bay, Mimi is busy catching up with her mum, Annie. <laughs> Merci. Oh, biscuit. Phil, do you under, do you understand any of what's being said here? Um, a little bit. <laughs> I know they, talk, they were talking about coffee for a minute or two, and then Mimi's mum burnt herself. That's what I really got. <laughs> I think everybody got that bit. Yeah. <laughs> I normally know what they're talking about, so as long as they're not talking about me, that's all right. <laughs> Are you going to try and learn it properly? No. <laughs> No, I might do. I don't know. It's too difficult. It's too difficult. I struggle with English. <laughs> is your is your mother able to say any words in English yet? Has she learned anything? Mm, I think she can. Do you speak English? No. Did you get that one? <laughs> so, with Phil's parents due in from the Midlands on the next ferry, it'll be entirely up to Mimi to keep the conversation flowing. 
И сутринта, нали? Те, I think it'll be alright. I'm really scared. I'm not I am sure. really scared. Because Phil's mom and dad, we're exactly in the same situation, but for some reason my mom thinks she's the one who needs to go know the language. David Easton, meanwhile, is on a mission all his own. Armed only with a camera and his memory, David is planning a series of final trips to each of the islands. First stop is the extraordinary remains of a Stone Age village on the northern coast of St. Mary's. It's incredible to think that this was built as much as 4,000 years ago, nearly. Um, one of the things great about it is that, you know, when you go down to the churchyard in St. Mary's, you see all these names of island people, and I think, I wonder if some of the people who live on Sully today, whether their ancestors were actually buried in here, are the people whose links would go back that far? I have no idea, of course, but it just sort of fascinates me. And uh, I think, yeah, these guys in here sort of looked out at a different world from this. I mean, this is fantastically beautiful. What did they look out at? One island, I suppose. And, and did they have any sense of beauty or landscape? Or was it just daily drudge and grind? Because these ruins are so remote, they've escaped the ravages of time and generations of visitors, and rank amongst the best preserved anywhere. Before he leaves, David wants to complete a short history of the rich spiritual and religious life of the Isles of Scilly over the centuries. But getting around all the islands and doing the necessary research to complete a book before he leaves is going to be quite a task. With the music gig days away, Glyn and the other members of Delusions have been hard at work on secret practice sessions. Thank you, right? Yeah, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. But there's still some considerable doubt if they're really up to a public performance. So, Glyn, is this one of the um, last practice sessions before the big day? It the gig? sure is. Yes, our nerves are beginning to tell as you can tell by the tension in the room tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Does everyone feel prepared? No. no. How many songs have you, uh, have you got lined up? Yeah, How many songs are you, are you confident about playing? Need to join together as one. Now, there's two completely different questions here. How many songs we got lined up is 15. How many songs we feel confident about is two. <laughs> You can practice as many times as you want, and nothing's going to prepare you for standing in front of an audience and, uh, and actually performing it. I mean, you're a performer anyway, with the job you do with Island Tours, you're talking to people, meeting the public, but this will be different. Like. Yeah, because when I'm working, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Time is certainly against them. One of the members of Glynn's original band, Nick, has come over from the mainland to lend a hand. It's his first rehearsal with the band. Don't you all start together or not? Just no. and drums. Uh, the keyboard comes in and does the introduction, and then we come in after he's done two of them. <laughs> Eventually, they do get going, though not without a few bum notes creeping in. The Tom Jones classic Delilah proves far trickier. No, well, I, I, I just got lost completely because we're, we're all playing different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens on the... Um, no, no, no the, 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 the last chord before you go back in again, you're doing an F. No, I'm doing a B flat. Right, so... <clears throat> can, we, can we just do the, the chord? The whole of the band, especially Glyn, is struggling to keep up with old pro Nick. Um, e flat. C, C7. I'm going to have to practice all this at home. I, I, 
this is different to what we've been doing. I can't, I can't pick it up now. The stakes are high. With not a lot to do on Silly in the evenings, they know the audience will be packed with friends and colleagues. It'll only take one weak link, and the debut of Delusions could be a complete disaster. Down by the harbour, it's take two for Phil and Mimi. Accompanied by Mimi's Bulgarian friend, Nelly, they're heading down to meet Phil's parents off the ferry. Mimi's folks are so on edge, they've decided to wait at home. How are you feeling? I'm nervous. A little bit nervous. Why are you feeling nervous? No, it's just, it's just because it's the first time my parents have, meet, have met Mimi's parents, and, uh, yeah, it's always a bit nervous, I think. You know, and I've, I've been in this situation in the past, but with um, ex-girlfriends and such, and it's always, it's always, I'm always nervous about it, but even more so this time, because of the language barrier, so... Oh, Amy, how feeling? are you feeling? Nervous. You're feeling nervous too? <laughs> yeah. Everybody's feeling nervous. I know, yeah. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? It's a happy occasion. Oh, it's a happy occasion, but <laughs> it's just... Uh, yeah. I suppose, in a way, it's, you know, it's a little bit awkward because they can't speak to each other. They share a grandchild, and it's just a shame. It's well over a year since Phil's dad and mum last saw their son and daughter-in-law and little Annie. Their granddad. Oh, she just... I think she just spotted somebody, and I think she spotted me, me dad and went, Granddad, oh, who's this? Who's this? Hello. Who's this? <laughs> as well as his mum and dad, Phil's daughter from his first marriage, Hannah, has also come along with a friend to see her little sister baptised. The long-awaited meeting of the parents seems to start off well enough.